Hey, I'm Nathan Brandt with Coal Ironworks. Today on the American Made series, we're visiting Flex Machine Tools. We're gonna get a behind the scenes look at how they build the equipment that we actually use in our production processes, as well as sit down with Nick Kennedy, the current CEO, to talk about the trials and challenges they've overcome as a company, the way that he sees them moving forward, and really the future for Flex Tools. A lot of this area is where we put either our demo machines or our test machines. So, okay. of course, we're constantly innovating, constantly trying to do new things, push the yeah. machine's limits. And so that's primarily what these specific machines serve. But also, you notice we've got a specific part, a long part here, and we produce a lot of the parts that we utilize here at Flex on our own machines. We figure, you know, what better way to be about what you talk about than literally using the machines that you distribute in the market. So not only are we doing some high-level testing here, just generally pushing the machines, learning what those boundaries are, doing a lot of R&D, and then also producing our own parts in house. So really, really cool area, one of my favorite areas of the shop specifically. Machining centers, lathes, all that kind of stuff. Is this for your production parts? Are you guys getting in castings that you're finishing? Or what primary uses are you guys uh, using this equipment for? Yeah, so outside of utilizing our own machines, right. uh, we utilize here in our machine shop just to take some of that raw parts. And we're doing okay. a lot of production work here okay. specifically. Yeah. Not a ton of prototyping because yeah. of our set products that we specifically sure. have, but it's awesome to be able to have our own little in-house machine shop. And as we now start getting more machines of our own here specifically yeah. in-house, we're just continuing to utilize those more. Okay. So utilizing our machines to make yeah. parts for our own machines. Right. Very, very cool. This is just a conversation about what your experience has been coming into a third generation business, how you've, how you've been, you know, grown into that role before you moved here, like what, what kinds of things you've done in your life before you took the helm of Flex, and then a little bit about like how you've, uh, how you've been impactful and what changes you've seen over your tenure as being at the helm and, and just kind of give us some context for, for who you are and what you've done. Oh, sure, sure. So my, on my background, the uh, prior, prior to this, I was a helicopter pilot. So the, uh, I had the opportunity to work with uh, a lot of special operators at a high level, which I learned a lot from. Got a little sneak peek behind the curtain of how, uh, how our military operates, yeah. which is it was a great experience. So the, uh, that was my previous uh, experience prior to coming into manufacturing. But, and I hope to be more impactful. I, I don't know that I've been <laughs> impactful yet, Sure. but uh, we're trying. We, I do know there's a lot of fundamental issues in manufacturing that we're, we're trying to tackle, especially if you look at the, the problems with manufacturing in America now um, with, with cost, technology, and how little that's actually being done here. Right. But, uh, but we, we're making strides to change that, yeah. for sure, with our products. And hopefully you guys saw that a little bit today. Of course, absolutely. Um, we're, you just have to be a little more creative and right. very deliberate about manufacturing here. Yeah. And we can do it smarter, we can be effective, yeah. and, and we can do it, but you definitely have to, you have to make a plan, be deliberate and say, <laughs> hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. do this, we're gonna be successful. Right. So we're, we're doing that. Yeah. So what, when you came in, what were some of the initial obstacles that you faced? Yeah, so for me, I came in, we were just an assembly house. We were right. talking about that. We contract manufactured everything. Yeah. So when I started, we, we were outsourcing all the work um, and just assembly. So I had to buy some machines, learn machining from yeah. nothing, right. figure out all the pains that come along with that. It's so much, you can't just buy a machine and make parts. I, Unfortunately. I wish, <laughs> I, I wish it was that easy. Your next innovation should be, you can just buy a machine and you yeah. just raise your thoughts. Oh, I totally yeah. agree. Actually, <laughs> actually it's, a, it's something, it's a fundamental issue in machining. It is. Taking a part from CAD to a finished part, yeah. like CAD to G-code. Yeah. And it's, it's something uh, we, we are playing with right now. Yeah. 
just to, even if you solve that problem with, uh, you know, using a system or a service mm -hmm. that doesn't exist currently. Right. Because we build vertical machining centers now. Right. And it's still, that's a problem for our customers. Yeah. So I, I actually, it's a, it's a, it's a side project, but there, there is something to be had there. It's a skills gap issue yeah. back to manufacturing in America. That's yeah. another problem because for the last, you know, three plus decades, we've right. outsourced all of our work, right. not just literally outside of the country. Right. So there's, there's huge skills gaps and that is an issue. Yeah. And it's, it's, it was hard for us. So yeah, Absolutely. when we, that's how we got started. We were an assembly house. Okay. We want to start doing more, learning yeah. more. So we bought some machines. Um, they're sitting down there. Yeah. And, uh, and we, we, we got into it, but then you realize, hey, I need tooling experts, fixturing experts. I need programmers, right. machinists. Right. So it's, it's quite involved. And yeah. I do think it should be easier. There's, there's new, oh, sure. there's, there's ways we can make it easier. Right. So, and we try to do that with our products today. Of course. So it's, but yeah, we're never done. We're never going right. to be done. Right. So, so you, your background wasn't in machining. You came into this. Yeah, just a, a yeah, a, a pilot. Right. So I was not a, a machinist or anything. Yeah. Um, definitely interested in it. I love, okay. I, I'm simple. I love America and I love manufacturing. <laughs> so, so I'm just naturally interested in it. Sure. And, and honestly, I've got the opportunity just to surround myself with great people. Sure. So we're a super fortunate company. Yeah. We have awesome products. Yeah. And especially the FlexArm product, hopefully you guys have one. Yeah, I don't know. Do. Oh, yeah. good, yeah. good. So great products we get to work with great people great right. companies yeah. and that's that's just another reason that it, it inspires me to want to be better here right. and create really cool solutions right um it's it's part of our vision to yeah. create really cool machinery solutions right. so it's it's because of who we get to work with sure. and uh, back to i love this country yeah. and and everybody that's allowed us to be here today so we're super fortunate yeah. and we're gonna in the next 10 years we're gonna make it better right. for sure right so, so as you moved into the, as you moved into and began to take over operations here, what, is that where you find your, found yourself and find yourself today applying most of your attention is to the manufacturing side? Are you more looking outward? Like, give me a little taste of what, what your, your focus is. Yeah. So my, my focus and it, I, it, it changes, um, as we've grown. So I, I would say most of my, most of my, 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 my job is to really provide the vision for the company. Right. And, but sometimes it's hard for me to not, to not get into the weeds. <laughs> of course. So, but really if I step back and just delegate and empower to our awesome team, sure. it's really just, it's as simple as that one, not right. running out of cash. Right. We can't run out of money right. and in providing a strong vision for the company. Right. And that's, yeah. that's, that's all I have to do. Right. That makes so, your dailies actionable. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. I get to, I just get the opportunity to, to, to work with guys just like you sure. and, and all these, all these other people here, we get to impact their lives positively, right. you know, through my, my employees here yeah. and then through our products. Right. So we get to help manufacturing as a whole. Right. So I, I, I want to make that connection and, and ultimately we want to, we want to make a positive impact on a lot yeah. of people's lives. So, so is that kind of what you found when you, because you, your, your flex arm is that, that legacy product, kind of the, the foot in the door into the industry. And then, I mean, is that accurate? Nice, yeah. yeah. And so then when, when, what was the deciding factor to move from just that and begin moving up? Was that, it, was that you're doing kind of a pursuit of scale or what, oh. what made that decision? Oh, for sure. So we are looking. We, we came into the company, we looked at, we had the legacy product, great right. product, right. still is today. Right. And we've, we've since designed a lot of new features around it. Yeah. Um, but we knew we needed to touch more on the automation side. Okay. So we started getting into the, the CNC machines, the jet, the jet machines. Right. So CNC motion control. Right. And uh, that, it just naturally, and of course, we're going to surround the industry of manufacturing. Right. And yes, the flex arm is a great foot in the door. We have oh, thousands yeah. of customers around right. the... The, the world right so it's uh it's it's, it's still my favorite product <laughs> so. sure. of course no so is that was that invented by you guys was that a purchased product like how did that get started yeah, initially yeah. The flex no, arm? my grandfather started it okay in 1984 okay so he he built the first one in 84 and then they started advertising it i want to say i think the trade show is the imt 1986 imts okay have you ever been to IMTS? I haven't. I've sent some guys there, but I've never been myself. You have to go. Okay. But it's a big, we, we actually just had it. It's a yeah. huge international metalworking technology show. Yeah. And they, they showcased it there. Yeah. 
And then the rest is history. They, yeah. they, he created a really strong brand, the Flexon sure. brand. And, and now that it's like the, the Kleenex of right. tissues, you know, right. it's an articulating arm is just identified as a flex arm. Right. So that's great for us. Yeah. So. <laughs> right. But, uh, but no, what about Fabtech? Have you been there? Well, I've not been there either. That's getting coming up in November though, yeah, right? Yeah, really soon. Yeah. You we, go. We've got, so we've got some business partners that we work with on the fab side, uh, that we are planning on going cause we've got a couple, uh, because we were in, in the forging press yeah. side of things, you know, there's some very specific, uh, it's a very niche market for us. You know, you're in, in, in tapping, you've got that nice general base. Like if you're in fabrication, you've needed to tap a hole at some point. Yes. Very few guys, uh, have needed to forge things. Right, right, right. So it does make our market pretty niche, but what I'm recognizing now that we've been doing this for seven years is it, there's a lot more than I thought. And especially in the ornamental ironwork side. Yeah. And the cool thing about that is the opportunity for us is to say, oh, you don't have to go to King's Metal anymore and order Chinese made, you know, uh, cast parts. Yeah. You can define exactly what you want. Um, we can work with you to, to machine the die set that you need and we can apply that solution. And now we're bringing stuff back in house. We're improving lead time for yep. that customer because the whole basis of our company in the beginning was we would have a fab shop call us and say, I need this part. I can't get it from Kings for less than six months lead time. Right. I need it next week. It's like, cool. And right. then we would go and forge 10,000 of that little finial or that little scroll work. Right. You know, and that was like, that was our bread and butter in the beginning and why we needed a press because we would get orders for 10,000 or something. Yeah. But uh, that allowed us then now to start, you know, I, I found myself because I was, you know, co-inventor, co-founder, I get in the weeds a lot and I love to be in the shop. And obviously, yeah. uh, you know, I end up getting into that day to day. And so it's really impactful to, to me to hear you talk about, you know, taking a step back to empower and to provide vision and direction because I'm realizing how vital that is to that next step of scalability is I need to be able to articulate exactly what we're doing here. And right. it sounds like that's what you've really put your attention towards is what are we doing it? Why yeah. are we here? And what is the purpose? Because that purpose driven pursuit is so much more effective than Anything else? Yeah, oh, right. absolutely. And, and yeah. we actually, we were just meeting about that prior to come out up here. We're just talking about just communication in general. Of course. And and, and we still, we don't do it really, really well. Right. Like we can do so much better right. how we communicate what, what we're trying to accomplish here. And and how we, uh, yeah, for sure. The company is, it's a great company. And we, we make great products, but it's, it's I mean, it's a bit cliche, but uh, it's it's only because we have people. People right. are what make companies. Right. So, and that's that's that. Like, we make cool products, but it's because we have really cool yeah. people. Yeah. So, and that would ne that's never going to change. Right. I do know that won't change into the future right. either, R regardless right. of technology. Right. It's it's still without people, we won't right. have a business. Right. So. Yeah. That, that's my job. It yeah. really is. That is my job, and then everything else will fall into place undeniably. Yeah.